Okay, today is a simple one. We're going to go over the most common questions I've been reading about VHS and put them together all nice and neat for your convenience and ad revenue. On that note, today's video is brought to you by the like button. Let the algorithm know that you want to see more VHS content on this channel. You can sub too if you like so you don't miss any other videos in the future. Someday, this space will be filled with my dream sponsor, Tapatio Hot Sauce. Space Coconut. When will it be released? Eventually. Is this on console? Not at launch, but it's planned for the future. Dead by Daylight was PC only for a year before it was brought to consoles, so I'm sorry I can't console you. But if the media preview is any indication, when it does hit consoles, it'll probably be playable. Do I need a good PC to play VHS? I play the game with no issues on an 8-year-old PC streaming to the devs and creators on Discord running a GeForce GTX 780. So no, you don't need an epic PC. <laughs> Please hit the like button. Since we're talking about money, how much will VHS cost? It will be free to play with a cosmetics shop packed with enough cosmetic options to make my wife confiscate my card so I don't buy them all. I spend hours farming pieces for my Final Fantasy character. You bet your ass I'll buy cosmetics if they're priced fairly and the earnables are just as good. A battle pass is planned for the future, so we'll see what that looks like then. I personally hope that the options, prices, and time costs are player friendly, but I'm confident that the devs want the same. Will tunneling be a problem? If the monster tunnels one teen and stands on their body for any reason other than feasting, the other three teens will have plenty of time to craft weapons and take the monster out, rescuing the downed teen as a result and protecting them as they craft their own weapon, leading to the imminent death of the monster. So possibly. But it depends on the players you go against, and there's a downside in doing so against equally skilled opponents. On that note, toxicity. Toxicity exists in every game, but once the match starts, the monster and teens can no longer hear each other during the match, communication does not get restored when the match ends, and there's no way to communicate with the other side at the end. If players are toxic in the lobby, it's an easy matter to dip out and find a new one. FOV sliders? From the Discord? Not likely. Sorry. It actually impacts gameplay quite a bit, particularly when it comes to being able to hide around corners and move evasively against the monster. If you're worried about it, the devs said this also. We actually have some dev team who get motion sick really easily and they're okay with playing team. Now, I don't get motion sickness and I don't understand how FOV helps, I just know that it does for some people, and I don't know how that would affect a person playing monster. So this person didn't say if um, it affected monster, but I mean, if it affects you and you understand it and this statement means a lot, uh, there you go. Um, but I don't know how it'll affect monster. What about hackers? My personal thought about hackers is this. I hope that they can mitigate them effectively, but hackers exist in every game in existence. If you can come up with a solution to eliminate hacking from a game entirely, you could become a billionaire by patenting the idea and the tech. We'll see what happens in that regard. Are the maps procedurally generated? No. The maps have a single layout, so you can and should memorize them to be as effective as possible. The crafting stations, on the other hand, do not have static locations and change from match to match. What about a colorblind option? A colorblind option with adjustable intensity will be available on VHS probably immediately, not years from release. How long are the matches? Matches can be as short as a few minutes, but I'm not sure how long they can be. It depends on the skill of the players and their opponents. Dollmaster in particular can escape to the opposite side of the map, making his hide-and-seek nature of play particularly lengthy. Why is it fun to lose? I wanted to clarify something here because a lot of people were confused in the comments. Losing isn't fun per se. It was genuinely embarrassing doing so poorly in front of the other people in the Discord, and I didn't exactly enjoy that. However, what I meant was that losing was fair. I deserved to lose, and I didn't feel cheated out of a win or into a loss. I didn't know the map layouts, so I lost. I didn't know abilities, so I lost. I got lucky a few times and almost won, but still lost because of my inexperience. That's what I meant by saying it was fun to lose. 
I knew I could get better and that the balance wasn't deliberately holding me back from utterly decimating the opposing team. It was my own skill, or in this case, my complete lack of it. This is why balancing for the top is better than balancing for the middle. Balancing for the top forces the bottom to improve to make it to the top. Balancing for the middle pulls the top down to the middle. That's not exactly fun if you think about it. I could definitely go on, but I'll leave it there for now. If you have any questions, leave them below and I'll make a second FAQ addressing the ones that I'm allowed to. I hope you found this informative. If you want to help me get a new computer, like and share this video so other players can see it. Sub if you want to see more videos like this in the future and hit the bell so you don't miss any new ones that come out. I'll be focusing on VHS for as long as I can and I'll still be playing Final Fantasy, so look forward to that. I appreciate all of you who are excited for the game and for the channel. I really, really do. Until next time, I'm Space Coconut, and you're welcome.